where uh, an abscission zone does not form uh, where the non-woody root connects, and when that opening remains, uh, certain microorganisms that would like to do nasty things to trees uh, have an opening to get in. So the point is, this type of mulch in this gradation uh, will last considerably longer over a period of time, and along its process of decomposition with the help of microorganisms and organisms, uh, it will benefit groups of organisms throughout its entire decomposition process until this wood becomes completely incorporated into the soil with just residual lignin. Another common name for this material once it has become incorporated into the soil and broken down is new soil. Now, another treatment that we performed here, as you can see these stumps that we cut and girdled, there were several trees that were growing up into the canopy and touching the uh, white oak tree that's our monumental tree. Now there's a, a situation in, in the woods and in a forest that we don't completely understand, and that is when one tree touches another tree, one tree dies. If you look closely, in the woods at these trees, they're really not touching. So we felled or cut down uh, several of these younger trees that were growing up into the canopy of the white oak, not removing any wood. We placed the wood with sole contact and perpendicular to the slope where possible, as we did over here thus to reduce soil erosion. The brush from the trees that we removed, or we cut down, we didn't remove anything from the site, except some sawdust on our clothes, um, would have been to some people an unsightly site. So one of our treatment plans in our organic treatment here was that we made small brush piles. Small brush piles make wonderful homes for small wildlife and shelters from predators. So these small brush piles, as they are placed, also reduce problems associated with debris and fires and help protect small wildlife. So we have several brush piles that we made. Uh, we did girdle the trunks so that these trees maybe would not sprout and continue to grow up into our canopy. We did leave this beautiful dogwood that you can see right here. This dogwood tree, Cornish, Florida, is a shade-loving understory tree. Its natural habitat is in the understory. It's a beautiful specimen. A little bit different than what they look like when they're grown in somebody's front yard in the full sun. Next, there was some rather large symplastus branches, which we did remove without wounding the swollen area at the base, which, was, which is parent stem tissue. This material here has living cells in it and is part of the parent stem. The branch itself had died, or the symplast of the branch had died. We removed this back to the swollen area without wounding the swollen area and without leaving a stub. We did this where we could. These are called trunk flares at the base of the tree. They are made up of trunk tissues. Then they go through a transition zone, which is a root collar. And what's below the root collar are woody roots. Just because a tree has a good trunk flare does not necessarily mean it has woody roots that are in good shape. However, we did detect with the shigometer a reduced resistance of the cambium zone 
of the electrical resistance of the cambium zone in the trunk flare area.